Hola. Bienvenidos a Lightspeed Spanish. Bienvenidos. This week we have a series of questions. In fact, we're probably going to do two weeks. A series of questions from Chantel. Hola, Hola Chantel. Chantel. And Chantel has a lot of little questions that we thought we could just run through okay. and we'll be picking your brain, Cynthia. Okay. Yeah. Vale, entonces hablamos de todo en la siguiente parte. If you like the content, please hit the like button and subscribe because it's free. And if you'd like to help our channel and if you'd like to help us to produce more content, you can join the channel. And there are a couple of options where you can come and join us on our live lessons. So if you'd like to help us, come and join us. So, Chantel, Cynthia, first one. Chantel said that a while ago we did something on metaphors. I've talked about metaphors in Spanish and how they don't translate into it. And she, she said, um, for example, asking somebody if they're mad. Okay. okay. <laughs> Now, there's a problem. And she said it can be... I'm just imagining what happened. It could be uh, very offensive to say, ¿Está loca? Uh -huh. Yeah. But of course, are you mad? In Certainly for Americans means, are you angry? Ah, uh, okay, yes. Yeah. yeah. So you're not going to say, ¿Está loca? No. So how do you say, are you mad? Are you angry? ¿Estás enfadada? En ¿O estás enfadado? ¿Enfadado o enfadada? Ajá. Uh -huh. So, enfadado. So, if you're in America... Uh, Latin America. Latin America. America Latina, I wanted to say. Then the, you might have enojado. Enojado. Enojado, enojada. Yeah. Here in Spain, enfadado, enfadada. Enfadado, enfadada, cabreado, cabreada. Yeah. And cabreado, cabreada is very common here in Spain. Okay. So, that's how you do the... You just use estar because we're talking about an emotional change. Es. Yeah. All right. Um, and then Chantel's asking about pensar versus creer. And what she's saying is that in Mexico, she notes that they use creer much more than pensar. Uh -huh. Yeah. And she's saying, well, my assumption is that creer implies thinking while uncertain, uh, whereas pensar uh, implies actual thoughts. It's a lot more simple than that, isn't it? Well, I, in English, you also have I believe or I think, and yeah. you can use them interchangeably. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we do virtually the same. Like we, we can say I believe or I think. Creo, sure. pienso. Yeah. Um, so in, in, in translation cases, terms and meaning terms, there's very little, there's I little believe no or I difference. Think. Yeah. 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 One of the things, this is, this is one, one thing that you notice with anybody who's lived in a Spanish-speaking country for a while, they will tend to go straight for creo que, rather we, than pienso que. We tend que. to, yeah, we tend to say creo que. I think it's because it's shorter, I don't know. Sure. Um, mm. so in English, you would say I think, it's more than I believe. Yeah. Um, and in, in Spain, or in Spanish, I think, um, we tend to say more creo que. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It just tends to be the go-to verb rather than pienso que. And I think this is maybe maybe because it's shorter, maybe because it's quicker to say creo que instead yeah. of pienso que. Creo que, yeah. yeah. And they do shortness. Creo que, creo que, yeah. Creo que. <laughs> just faster, but still creo que. <laughs> yeah. All right. And what about using aún versus todavía? Aún versus, versus todavía. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, either all. Uh -huh. So, what do they mean? In, in, in this sense, obviously, uh, still, mm -hmm. todavía, yeah? Todavía. And aún, still. Yes, right. Because if we, if we start from English, yeah. this is, that, that's the confusing part, the English. Sure. Okay. Because yeah. you have the yet, mm -hmm. which you tend to use in negative sentences. Or sometimes questions, but mm -hmm. negative sentences usually. Uh -huh. So that would be todavía o aún. I haven't done it yet, for example. Yeah. Todavía no lo he hecho. Yes. O aún no lo he hecho. Ajá. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Yeah. So you can have either or. Aún no lo he hecho, todavía no lo he hecho, no lo he hecho todavía, no lo he hecho aún. So there's, there's no difference. And this is the aún. Aún with... with 
With with the accent, yeah? yes. Aún. But also it can be still as well. Todavía estás aquí. Sí, todavía aún estás, estás aquí. aquí. Aún estás aquí. Are you yeah. still here? Yeah, so it's it's a still or a yet depending. A synthesis, the yet tends to come in a negative sentence. Yes, yeah, so no, aún no todavía. Uh -huh. So not yet. Not yet. And then todavía o aún, still. Yeah. So and this is just my perception, Cynthia, you have her idea. I hear todavía used probably more commonly than aún. I just tend to hear todavía more than aún. Although you do hear both, absolutely. It just tends to be a, a one that, that, I don't know, people go to. Yeah, I yeah. suppose personal choice. Sure. I, I think you use both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it must, I think todavía has a bit more emphasis in the way you can say it. Todavía. Whereas aún, mm. aún, you can't like bang it out. <laughs> todavía estás aquí. Rather than uh, uh, aún estás aquí. You know, I, I know, it's just a bit more oomph. Yes. Okay. And then for this uh, lesson, the last question that Chantel has is the difference between tan, tanto. Let's start there. Ah, we, we've just done this for the ser socio, for the socios. Uh -huh. Yeah, we've done a, a video on this. Yeah. Um. So tan and tanto. Tanto is as much. Yeah. Tanto is as much. As much. Or, or, or so yeah. much. As yeah. well, as much or so, so much. much. So, uh, yo tengo tanto como tú. Exactly. Okay, so it often goes with como, tanto como, as much as. Yeah? Exactly, or I have so much, tengo tanto. tanto. So, tanto is as much or so much. Yeah, okay. And then tan is as. Tan is as. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or so. Or, or so as well. Uh -huh. Like you say... Eres tan alta como yo. You are as tall as me. But also, yeah. you're so tall. Eres tan alta. Mm -hmm. So, and again, that, that sentence really isn't finished. It's tan alta, tan alta. punto, punto, exactly. punto. No? Like this, but so. again, tan works with como. Eres tan alta como yo. Exactly. Yeah? Yeah. So, as, as. So, tanto as much. And then, mucho and muy. Ha! We discovered the other day that the Royal Academy of Spain accepts muy mucho. Well, I didn't discover it. You just got, I haven't even check, checked because I don't want to know that that's the case. Muy I don't mucho. think so. I mean, it's... They said it's perfectly it's fine. Perfectly okay, fine. I've, well, ne I've never heard it. I only hear it as a joke. People saying that as a joke. Uh, it's, I mean, it's a literal transla translation from English. Very much. It just sounds... Yeah. Well... What an English person would say. No, very much <laughs> In so. In Spanish. Very much so. Um, so, muy is very. Muy is muy very. Is very. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, tu eres muy guapa. Exactly. Yeah. You are very good looking. And then, mucho is a lot. Or, or much. As or well. much as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, tu tienes mucho pelo, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Or if you say... Mm, I love you very much. Te quiero mucho. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like, a lot. Yeah. Okay. And then, that's just as a general, mucho. But then if you're going to add it to a noun, then you're going to change it into, it, it, whether it be mucho, mucha, muchos, muchas. Exactly. Yeah? So, mucho, mucha for uncountable items, muchos, muchas for countable. Yeah. So usually much is for uncountable, mucho, mm -hmm. mucha, and muchos, muchas will be many for countable so, items. Uh, tengo muchos coches. Muchos coches, I've got a lot of cars. muchas deudas, mm -hmm. many debts. Many debts, yeah. It's <laughs> not um, true. Not true story. Yeah. Mucha paciencia, mm -hmm. a lot of patience, mm -hmm. or much patience. Yeah. Um, mucho... Mucho what? Tiempo. Mucho tiempo. Tengo mucho, mucho tiempo. tiempo. Okay. And then let's finish with demasiado. Demasiado. Demasiado is too much. Yeah? Too much. Mm -hmm. Too much. O, o too much. Demasiado is too much. And then demasiados, demasiadas will be too many. Too many. Yeah. So, for example, eh, esto es demasiado. 
para mí. This exactly. is too much for me. So then it's the, like an adverb or an adjective. Yeah. Demasiado would be the adverb. Yeah. ¿sí? And then as soon as you then make it into an adjective, yeah, then it becomes demasiado o demasiadas, demasiadas, demasiados. So for exactly. example, eh, tú tienes demasiados coches. Exactly, that would be the adjective. You have too many cars. Too many cars. But yeah? tengo anda demasiado despacio. Mm -hmm. Too slow. Yeah. That would be the adverb. Adverb, des describing the noun. Eso es. But I could say, for example, tú tienes demasiada paciencia. You've got too much patience. And now we're relating it to the noun, which is then, we, then it takes on the, the gender Eso of es. the noun. Yeah. Eso es. Yeah. Entonces, vamos a seguir con las preguntas de Chantel la semana que viene. Eso es. Pero de momento, nos vamos. Y nos vemos. Hasta luego. Adiós. Adiós.